everyone and we're taking a look at Omega Strike. This is a indie Metroidvania game described to me like a combination between uh, Metroidvania and Metal Slug. You can see the characters kind of has that Metal Slug feel and so is the shooting. And the shooting does have this Metal Slug kind of feel. Y'all see them teleporting between characters. That is uh, kind of a, a big crux of the game mechanics is that there's three different characters, each with their own special abilities that you need to swap between in order to progress the game. And I have a new area I haven't been through yet over here. I'm going to go ahead and explore. And we can start looking into that while I speak about the game. Uh, produced published by Wobblyware. Coming out on October 4th, 2017 for who knows how much money. Probably typical indie game price. Ah, probably typical indie game prices. Between $5 and $20 is widespread, I know. But that's, how, that's how it works. So the story is... It, the story is told to you like this the story is all played out for you in the intro sequence which is maybe a little like guess scary looking uh which is maybe a little unnecessary honestly in that so once upon a time there is super Ser super soldier serum everyone got turned into captain america but all the captain americas turned into zombies controlled by the progenitor of this uh serum dr omega who is a very stylish pretty stylish um villain as far as I can tell. So the characters, like your your player characters, the character model is pretty good. There's a wide variety of enemy types, and the Dr. Omega is like this ridiculous, absurd looking dude, and he has this beard that covers his face, but like this, this sinister smile that goes ear to ear. It, it, it looks not bad. Uh, the characters, though, you have generic 80s action man Sarge, um, just fat, strong guy, bear. And the guy from Splinter Cell, Dex. Which is not an impressive roster visually. Or very, I don't know, unique character ideas. But they do their job. They're just there as the filler. It's it's weird because there's a lot of cool enemy designs. It reminds me a lot of... Oh, we have to do some live swaps here. Nope, that's not that's not how you're supposed to do that at all. We're supposed to, because Dex can double jump and Sarge can grab on those poles. So we would have to have uh, swapped... More quickly than that, in order to jump off the pole, swap into Dex to double jump, and then swap back into Sarge. And stuff like that is where this game really shines, when you're forced to rapidly switch between the characters to make use of their individual weapons and abilities. But yeah, all super soldier types turned into uh, zombies, and now you're part of the resistance to kill the zombies. The game didn't really need the intro sequence. It was fine. It's not like it's detrimental to the game. But it would have been fine with some visual storytelling and just get you right into the action, of course. Because that's actually my biggest criticism of the game is that it starts slowly. It is a Metroidvania, so it does this thing where uh, you start off... You don't start off with all your abilities, you only start off with the characters unlocked. And then the first boss takes away Bear and Dex. You're left with poor Sarge, he's all alone. And he has to go rescue, rescue Bear and Dex before you get your whole squad back together to, do the, to complete the rest of the game. Problem is, the characters... Especially when they don't have any abilities in the early game. The individual characters are really boring. You really need the group of characters together to make this game work. Is this Sarge, just generic 80s action guy with assault rifle? This is what you do. This is all you do. You just shoot two things. Luckily, there's a variety of enemies. There uh, ooh, a lot of changes enemies like that guy. Very similar to another enemy, except that guy was shooting two bullets, and he looks slightly different. I appreciate that. Like I said, it reminds me of uh, Mega Man. Early Mega Man games with the creative... With the not only the style of the enemies, but the variety of enemies and their particular styles and behaviors. There's also a lot of robots. Like a surprising number of robots. The enemies initially zombies, like ex-super soldier zombie dudes. But then it's like, eh, also there's a lot of robots. <laughs> We're just gonna like, brush over. Through here. Oh, just take a bunch of damage. Top left is our life bars, our life cubes, I'm sorry. I believe they're referred to as life cubes. Which you can also upgrade, of course you can upgrade, you get the gold, you see we're collecting money. Use that for upgrades for your weapons. Upgrade their damage and range. You, if there were more weapons, I think it's one of my second big uh, criticism is that there are no power ups and no. The upgrades are really weak. The upgrades are damage and range, which I think you can do a lot more interesting things. See, like Dex has a shotgun, increase, I don't know, the spread, give them different types of shotgun rounds they can switch between. The. This game doesn't take full advantage of the number of buttons a player has access to, whether on PC or on controller. Uh, you only have... What about, like, an underslung grenade launcher for the assault rifle? Or, I don't know, some sort of 
CC round for the grenade launcher. Oh, I'm just uh, spitballing things because the lack of weapons, lack of ways of fight does feel like a weakness. Luckily, there are a variety of enemies, like I said, and a wide variety of bosses, which are boss fights pretty competent. Kind of wish I would have showed you one. I don't believe you can go back and kill boss 35, but they have specific strategies required to defeat. Required to defeat. I don't know what to do here yet. I haven't solved this part yet. It's part of the Metroidvania, like I said. I'll have to come back to these areas once I figure out how to get past that. But of course, the bosses uh, require different strategies to defeat. And oh, jeez, oh, jeez, that was terrible. Oh, oh, jeez. So you have to switch between different characters in order to. Oh, that's just terrible. Just give, just stop, just stop hurting me for a second. In order to the enemies. One of the ones I'm thinking of most right now is a, it was like a, a drill mining device type enemy that required a lot of use of Bear's Lob because he would pop up in an area where you'd have to shoot down into him and the only way to really do that is with this grenade launcher. Eh. you there. <laughs> it's taking a lot of use of this pole climbing mechanic because I just unlocked that ability. But yeah, otherwise, you don't really have much going away to combat. You got assault rifle, grenade launcher, shotgun. I wish there's some more variety in the combat, more combat abilities. Like maybe Barry's a big heavy, he's supposed to be the strong guy. His special thing is to move big heavy objects. Why don't you give him like some sort of haymaker punch? That gotta be a lot more. That'd be very interesting. And the combat roll, so you unlock Sarge's combat roll. Oh, it's also anemic because. It doesn't do anything other than get you through gaps. I wish it gave you some iframes. You can use it to dodge. How cool would that be? You have the character, all right, we can use this to dodge some damage if I time this roll right. Like, I could roll past that guy and avoid damage, shoot him in the back. That would feel so good, but it's not how it works. It's just to get through gaps, which a crawl would just work better and smoother and feel better and make more sense than to give me an otherwise useless combat roll. Hello, you? Yeah, cut that out. I'm pretty sure the assault rifle is their strongest weapon right now. And yeah, med kits, you also have an inventory that you can access healing items, you can access teleport beacons to go back to the hub area to buy more upgrades. Of course, you have to walk all the way back. It is very much committed to the Metroidvania style of backtracking, which is why typically I should color this whole impressions by saying that I don't... Ah, uh, no, ah. Uh. Also, there's only one button to switch characters. I really wish that we could go either direction because there's been a few times now that as you've seen where I'm Sarge, I need to become Dex. But to go from Sarge to Dex, I have to go through Bear. And to go from Dex to Bear, I have to go through Sarge. I really wish I could just go directly from one of the two, especially in situations like that, which require a rapid, uh, a rapid swap. Uh, you see, like these enemies, these require Bear's grenade launcher. So it's a good, it's a good uh, attention from the developer. Their enemies are required different strategies, which are from different require the use of the separate characters. That little pod is the save point, in case you didn't figure that out just now. It heals you and also, of course, saves it. And here's the map. There's a lovely map. Multiple areas, which you have to go through. And critical in a Metroidvania, of course. But don't... Ah, get off the spikes, Sarge. What are you doing? Blame that on Sarge, not me. I don't know why, just because it makes me feel better. It's not, if I say it's not my fault, I'll just blame it on the character. Uh, you can also upgrade your HP. You get partial HP upgrades you find in the world. All right, we're just doing terrible here. Partial HP upgrades you find in the world, and then you can bring that back to the hub, and you'll get an HP upgrade. Turns out to be really useful. Although the HP, once you get some money, because you can buy healing items with money, you seem to be able to stack them up as much as you can. So if I didn't want to die, I wouldn't die, because I have... Ooh. I have to go to my inventory. I have two medkits to restore 12 HP, and eight burgers to restore eight HP. So I have, uh, effectively, a ton of HP. Which makes the boss fights then a little bit easy because after you get some cash built up, you can buy some some burgers. You can just brute force your way through a lot of the boss fights. I've only been through about four or five of the boss fights, and there's 12 overall. I played the game for about three or four hours. Might be a little distended due to my I don't my unfamiliarity with the genre. I don't play a lot of Metroidvanias. If you're a more experienced Metroidvania player, you probably get as far this far in uh, like two hours maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure. It depends how fast you go back and how uh, well your fights against the boss go. Go through here, go down the pipes. And we are kind of hurt. Might need to heal to make sure we get make actual progress. Because if we die, we have to go all the way back to that save point and come back. And now the, the, the weakest point of the game, 
Like, you get all this, you get this swapping, you get those fast swaps sometimes, you have different weapons. The weapons could use different upgrades and more variety, but once you get all three characters and you have to rapidly swap through them all as you go through, that's when the game's at its best. When you, like, alright, I gotta be bear to shoot grenades at this guy, and then I can uh, switch to Sarge to grab onto the to the pipe, and then maybe there's a section I need to quickly swap to decks, do a double jump, and of course I don't even have all their abilities unlocked yet, so presumably that would become more involved and require more of that. That's where the game is really at its best, even if it is lacking some combat variety in the weapons and upgrades. But in order to get there, you have to go through the absurd section in the beginning where the game is completely anemic because you're just Sarge, and it's there's no weapon upgrades, there's no variety. The enemies, although there are a variety of enemies that you don't really appreciate that until you're further in the game and you see variations of earlier enemies and the new enemies when there's just a handful of the base early game enemies then that's not that interesting either that's like an hour and a half of the game for me where it was just it was dull i have to admit it was dull the big beginning is very weak it's very anemic and i ah oh, it sucks because a lot of people are just going to put this game down i think it does have some potential there's definitely some value here especially if you're into roguelikes if you're into this, ah, oh, jeez, that was terrible. If you're into character swapping, if you're into Metal Slug, this is a very reminiscent of Metal Slug, or even Mega Man. This does give me a lot of feel like Mega Man, although I wish more upgrades. Again, Mega Man, you have a variety of weapons and upgrades in Mega Man. This game's really lacking that. It's a, sorely lacking. Like, it's a, it is kind of a big deal that you don't have any alternate weapons or other than just the three of the characters, and your upgrades don't extend beyond damage and range. At least not yet from what I've seen in the game. That's a little disappointing. But... If you're still into those titles, this might be interesting. I like, I really like style. The pixel art seems a little eh, weak at first glance, but as I played through and I saw the variety and the animations in motion, it's actually, yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. In particular, other than the player characters who are kind of uh, anemic. Which I've been saying anemic a lot this run. It just feels very, for the early game at least, feels very appropriate to describe the game. Is that the early game is anemic. The game actually picks up after a couple hours, but you have to get through that early game, which is not player friendly. I just don't know why you wouldn't just make it like, hey, instead of making you work to make the game fun, the game needs to start out fun and then get more fun. I don't know a lot about Metroidvanias. I'm pretty sure that's one of the rules. You can't start out boring and this game is, it has a lot of stuff going on but it does start out kind of boring. Later on, it gets fun if you can earn it, but it should start out fun and you earn more fun, not just start out not fun, which is, I'm afraid to say, kind of is the feeling I got while playing it. that guy I'm down here uh, a couple of minor control issues like i said also the hit boxes feel a little oh, that's terrible hit bosses hit boxes feel a little off like sometimes i feel like i'm getting collide i'm collide with an enemy when i feel like i shouldn't it's in particular when jumping the character's legs seem to always be at full extension even though when you jump you bring your leg up and your leg goes down you feel like you should get a little arc over enemies it doesn't always work out that way it doesn't always feel like a great doesn't it's not always a great idea to jump over enemies they can't always duck over everything that you feel like you should be able to duck with. You can also shoot their heads as they pop off. It's very Metal Slug. I really appreciate that little detail. Oh no. Ah! Ah! I had that. I had that. And I messed it up. Double jump up to the thing and then turned into Dex to grab it. And then I said, I just... I, I panic and press Y too much. Again, yeah, minor control issue. would love to be able to swap to the characters on a more individual level. Then just try to swap through the whole team to get who I want to find. See if you can find a boss down here. That'd be perfect to wrap this up. Just give you a boss fight. But as usual, this is not too. Oh, I'm about to die. You know what? I don't want to die. I want to. I want to make sure I keep showing you new stuff. Let's eat a, a hamburger. I have a couple. Enemies do drop money or small healing items. Get over here. As a Metroidvania, there's a lot of backtracking, which normally, to me, in a video game, backtracking is a four-letter word. Which is why I don't play Metroidvanias, because backtracking is a core mechanic of those games. Which is why I typically avoid Metroidvanias. So as you can imagine, a lot of backtracking to go back and utilize your abilities to get progress on areas you couldn't access before. As well as if you want to upgrade to go back to town, you gotta go all the way back to town. Especially if you don't have the teleport, you have to walk back to your helicopter man, go to the area, with the town talk to the town people, go back to your helicopter guy, go back to the beginning of the level that you're on, and then work your way back through all the rooms to get to wherever you were. Which, dude, that's not fun for me. That's not, I mean, I'm not going to hold that against the game, it's just simply a mechanic, a consequence of the genre. 
and why I typically avoid the genre, but ugh, <laughs> I hate that. I do not, I do not backtrack. This game has relieves that a little bit with the no, it's not how you're supposed to do that with the teleporting mechanic, because you have a teleporter that you can buy from town to teleport back to town, so that saves you on half a trip at the very least. Wish there's almost a fast travel between save points. Maybe that would compromise the game a little bit. Uh, it being a traditional Metroidvania. I wouldn't mind, though, as a lazy modern gamer, if I can just be where I want to be when I want to be there. And not have to fight with the game just to get across the level, you know. Maybe I'm just spoiled. Maybe it's just modern sensibilities. Getting away of the oh, of an old genre. Jump over here. Double jump just to be safe. I do like Dex, although the shotgun is awfully short range. Controls work well. They're pretty responsive. I haven't any issues other than the couple I mentioned in particular swapping. There's no way to fast swap to the character you really want when you really need it, which can be very frustrating. Especially in areas that demand a rapid character swap, or at least you would want to rapidly character swap. Also, you can't shoot that up diagonally. That's a minor complaint. You can't shoot down, which... Like a metal slug. The game is supposed to have a metal slug type feel. Those feel kind of weird. I can't jump up and shoot down. You only shoot laterally and like vertically and horizontally. You're not doing any any diagonals. Alright, keep going down. What is this? Oh, lasers. These are new. I haven't found laser traps yet. Of course, there's light puzzles and... Oh, yeah, like, this is probably decent enough. There's light puzzling and platforming, as you would expect from this style of game. How cool would it have been if I could have dexed in midair and finished double jump to get to the top there? That would have been great. Couldn't do it, though. Couldn't quite swap fast enough, because I'd go through bear. Jump up. Oh, there we go. Something like that, see? Could have ran just to the left and then jumped, but that's not nearly as cool as character swapping in mid-action. That's not who I want. Oh, neither of those people who I wanted. And then Dex. And then he'll hit him with the assault rifle. Okay, we're alright. Uh, there's secrets to be found. The aforementioned life cubes upgrade your HP. You also get chests that have golden hidden chests. Usually require a little bit of backtracking to find. And properly utilizing the Metroid mechanics of, hey, I have a new ability, let's see where all I've missed. Because now I have this ability I can use. See where what requires it that I missed prior. Eh. No. No. <laughs> shotgun, just to do more damage. I just upgraded shotgun's damage. I think the assault rifle style is my most damage as far as an upgrade sense. That's my most damage upgrades. Not sure if it does the most DPS. I assume that would be the shotgun because it has low range. That's kind of the trade off. Also, I don't have all the character abilities yet, of course. So that'd be absurd. I played for a few hours. This game seems to have a decent amount of content. The Steam says I played for, I don't know, like three or four hours. I feel like I'm about a fourth of the way through the game. So you can get at least a decent 12 hours off this. And of course, that's not including all the potential future backtracking or if there's more difficult bosses you struggle with. Well, like I said, you can just buy a lot of healing. Probably brute force your way through some of the bosses. But of course, I'm not there yet, so I can't really comment too hard on that. Cool. Good job, Dex. Dex's double jump feels really good. That's why I prefer to be Dex, but... it would be Sarge for his upgraded damage right now. Pretty sure he does just the most DPS on my characters. This is an extensive area. There has to be a boss here. This is like a whole other level. Bosses usually guard upgrades, of course, so you fight a boss, get your upgrade, use it to go unlock a new area to go through the area to fight a new boss. Which is a pretty sure it's a standard type of gameplay loop for a Metroidvania type game. Alright, get over here. Again, a lot of money, we use the money for upgrades and all healing consumables. There's an achievement for buying the chicken healing consumable. I only bought the hamburger healing consumable, so I don't have that achievement yet. 
Uh, I wanted to be Dex to double jump up there. Again, you keep seeing how that... Now, uh, being able to swap directly between characters I'm going to swap between would have been really useful here. I don't have time to be Bear when I don't want to be Bear. Okay, okay. There we go. Each of those life blips represents 4 HP. Some enemies do more than 1 HP, more than 1 damage, though. I didn't know right away until it was at 2 HP. Hey, there's one of these life cubes. I might have enough for an upgrade now. Nope, I'm only at 2. Never mind. Need 4 to do an upgrade. Bear, if you'd please. Of course, part of the... Part of the you're gonna love it or hate it part of backtracking is all the enemies respawn. You have to fight them again. Again, just part of the, part of the genre. So I can't really hold that against the game. It's not part of the genre I enjoy. I've already killed them. Why are they back? Why is there just an endless rip number of enemies around? Which does let you farm for money if you need it for upgrades. If you feel like you really need it. I haven't found the upgrades. Other than some little bit of HP. Or at least buying more healing. I haven't found the upgrades to be too significant. There was a couple bosses where I'm like... Instead of being... <laughs> instead of being so worried about getting hit. I'm just going to kill them faster by taking more damage. And having like 18 hamburgers on me. Hello, hello. If you guys have a boss around here, I'd love to talk to him. I'm sure, what the boss fights are like? Because the boss fights are at least all right. Uh, some of the boss fights have been more hit and miss than the other ones. Some of the boss signs have been a little generic, more generic than the other ones. Some remind me of Metal Slug enemies. Some remind me of uh, Mega Man enemies. I don't know why Mega. This game really gets me in a headspace of Mega Man. I don't know why, but I do like it, because I love Mega Man. One of my one of my favorite uh, series as a, as a young man. I can go down there and get that med kit. I don't really want it, though. Because I have enough healing, and like... Eh, med kits are great, but I don't need to backtrack just that one med kit right now. Yeah, so making me get that Mega Man feel is very positive, because it's, it's an awesome game series. We might be facing... This, this, looks, this feels like a boss type deal, right? No enemies, and it's like an ominous corridor. It's a vertical corridor, but a corridor nonetheless. But maybe not. I got some choices on where to go. Alright, maybe not boss yet. Let's just try over here. That has to be something at the end of the yellow brick road, right? This feels boss. There we go, it's boss time. Perfect place to end. He's a miner. Overseer Brodus, where's your hard hat? How many times do I have to remind you idiots to wear your hard hat at all times? I guess you have to learn it the hard way. Yeah, oh, I, oh, then we have to double jump over that, obviously. Uh, let me duck under it. I don't know, he's throwing rocks at me, he's throwing rocks at me. Yeah, I pretty much have to be Dex for most of this fight. It's like... Due to the, uh... Just how much jumping this fight requires. Don't, don't let yourself get by that. Alright, although it is our first time fighting Boss Brodus. Should be okay. Because we have like 18 hamburgers. Plus some medkits. We'll be okay. Really wish I had a little bit more range on our shotgun. That's on me though. That's an optional upgrade. I have not invested heavily in. Probably should have exact specifically for this situation where there's a boss where I really need to be dex. Looks like we're fine handling this fight just as Dex. Instead of swapping a lot. Oh, I need to heal right now. Bosses are doing tend to be doing two damage now, so I don't want to be hit in one shot. So he's decently designed. He's like a fun little... He's out of that... Because he's at the red eye. He's a super soldier zombie guy. He's a miner. So he has his all pickaxe and rock falling mining themed attacks. The bosses are pretty... Nah, they're fun. They're well designed. Probably what, it even has a gold tooth, because it's a gold miner. I guess it's cute. It's a nice little detail. Me, that's probably where I get a bunch of this Mega Man feel from, is not only the design and variety of enemies, but also the bosses are awfully characterful. Way more characterful than Dex, Bear, and Sarge. 
I just shoot him in the face. We can keep shooting him at our leisure. Oh, we're gonna get the mining ability. Who does it? Sarge's bullets now break rocks. Oh. Alright. That's how we get through that. We just shoot him. Makes sense. Why is only Sarge's bullets? I feel like there's some places I can't shoot down. I'm pretty sure some places. Oh, I must be coming up and I have to shoot up. Okay. Think about this. About some other areas where there's breakable rocks on the ground. Now I must be coming. So that's not where I'm trying to get into. That's where I come out of. I shoot up. Got it. Got it. Alright, let's teleport back to base. Bing. Teleport back. There's an adorable dog here. Love it. You can buy. Here's where you buy those hamburgers. Oh, we should buy the chicken. There we go. Achievements for buying chicken. This guy still the upgrades. So we get more range, damage, 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 range, range, damage. Really wish there was some uh, a little more interesting upgrades in here. And of course, Mr. I upgrade your HP when you get enough. You give him enough life cubes. And Mr. Mr. Mac, he's <laughs> he's your best friend because he flies between areas, which I couldn't imagine if you literally had to walk everywhere. But he gives you a little bit of he gives you like a type of fast travel. But really, they're just totally different levels. I don't think you can walk between them even if you wanted to. But it's been Omega Strike. It's a nice little slice of gameplay. The So when the game's in full swing and you're swapping between characters and using their different abilities and weapons to you know solve the problems presented to you, the game flows well and feels good and it's a pretty competent experience. The characters are great. The enemy characters specifically. Your heroes are lame. I'm not I'm just gonna say it. Like I don't Splinter Cell guy, generic 80s action man. And buff dude, uh, it's like with jiggly shoulders. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not super into that. But the enemies are pretty cool. I like the way a lot of the enemies are designed and the boss designs. Gives me a big, like, set a big Mega Man feel and a Metal Slug feel, which is, I imagine, intentional. But the start of the game, when the game starts, it's just so anemic and slow because you're just Sarge with just an assault rifle. And it's like that for like an hour. <laughs> an hour, hour and a half. However long it takes you to get the unlocks. And then you get Sarge. Or you get um, Bear. And then it's just Sarge and Bear. And it's a little bit better. But I really think the game should just let you just throw you in with all three characters that you can teleport between. Just to accelerate that early game. Because I know in a Metroidvania you're supposed to start with like nothing and build yourself up with upgrades and such. That's a big part of the, uh, big part of the genre. But you can't start with nothing. Like, you can't be... The, the base... The base you start at still has to be entertaining. Otherwise, you're not going to want to find more stuff because you don't want to keep playing. I think this game kind of falls short a little bit. If you can muscle past that, if you're okay with that, if you can be like, man, it's kind of lame, but I'm ready for the payoff of getting more stuff so I can have that... Uh, so I can have the abilities working together and get the full experience of the game, well, then, by all means, check it out. If you don't have the patience like me, it might be a bit of a struggle. Otherwise, but I'm not here to tell you whether to buy the game or not. I'm just here to show you the game. And it's up to you as an informed consumer to decide for yourself whether it's something you want to participate in or not. Coming out October 4th, Omega Strike. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Your obscure compliment for the day. Let's add these compliments to uh, these, these first impressions as well. You probably have an adorable dog. Look at that dog. I bet you have an adorable pet too. Look at him. Amazing. I'll see you next time.